Hello everyone and welcome to Planet Zoo. Today I am doing a little one-off speed build. I'll do these now and again when I uh, if I want to, if I feel like build, building something and it would, doesn't really fit in the theme of any of my current zoos. Like the only zoo I'm working on now is called Claintain Zoo, which is a as it is now, it's going to be an like an olden zoo set in the the early 20th century. So all the exhibits were going to be, uh, you know, kind of the old, concreted, kind of animal cruel exhibits. Uh, and I felt like building a modern exhibit. So I decided to come here and build a little red panda exhibit. So with the uh, red pandas, I decided, I, like, after I chose them, I decided it would be cool to build a little dome structure for them to live in. So I'm here uh, making this glass dome for the red pandas. And well, a glass dome might not necessarily be realistic. For red pandas since uh, it, it would kind of act as a greenhouse and red pandas they don't need to live in a greenhouse they, they can tolerate cold temperatures they don't need a warm temperature that like a glass dome would give you other than that I think the exhibit is pretty fine so I mean we don't have chain link pieces in the game if we had chain link pieces then I'd definitely make a chain link aviary we do have the chain link fences but nothing you can make a roof or dome with Unfortunately, hopefully soon once we'll get aviaries and we can get our nice chain link thing. But for now, it's a grass dome. And so, while the walls of the dome, I did use the on grid pieces, but the the roof of the dome actually used the the, the, the these little glass shapey things, and that actually works out quite well. You can make quite some cool domes with them. Although there was one problem you, you'll see me encounter is that I'll so I use the triangles for the side and I use the, see the the squares for the oh, yeah the other side and there will be a little gap in between them and that's where the the absolute the the the, the, the plaster pieces are oh, those wonderful plaster pieces they're an absolute godsend because they are off grid they're flexi color they just they don't have any specific texture. So I use those to fill in the gaps between the shapes and it just looks like a little, it looks like supporting beams almost. I think it's really quite good. I use the plus pieces quite a bit in this exhibit actually. For the night rooms I use it for the roofing and the staff so. As you can see I do have that night room in the back there. That's where the pandas will be able to go and retreat from the guests. Because this is a walkthrough exhibit so. If they really don't want to be seen by the guests, they can go in there because guests don't have you in there. And there will be a little, what's it called, the keeper hut? Yeah, there will be a keeper hut in there. This, this building will be on the workshop in case you want to do, download it and see it. But anyway, with regarding to the path, I do, as you see, I put it in the middle now. But I will move it off to the side. I'll explain why I did that in a little bit. It's just... Uh, oh, I can explain it now actually because nothing else to talk about, but I moved it off to the side because I figured the if, you, if I kept it in the middle the pandas wouldn't uh, Wouldn't have any privacy Say uh, because Well, they wouldn't be able to retreat to the back of the exhibit or this any of the side of the exhibit because people will be right in the middle of it But if I put the path to the side then at least the pandas can Retreat to the back of the exhibit if they don't want to be seen by the people I'm pretty sure I work on that pretty soon. Or, oh, yeah, I'm still working with these little plaster pieces. You can see it's really good. The dome turned out quite well, actually. So, yeah, uh, that was a bit, there was a cut there. Oh, yeah, and another reason why I put the path to the side is this barrier gate. This, not guest gate, sorry. It's way, it's, I don't like it. It's this big wooden thing that I couldn't really fit in there. So this isn't an actual walkthrough exhibit, as in how the game sees it, where you have your, you know, your walkthrough, PKS actually walk through the exhibit, they technically walk to the side of the exhibit. I'm just trying to think when I do that, but you'll see, I'll move the pathway to the side now, yeah. I do that, and then what I do is I take the barrier and put it right on the side of the pathway, and then I put these little glass pieces it's like meter tall glass pieces and the pandas can't actually climb over that so essentially guests are walking through the side of the exhibit and well I'm not sure maybe if I kept the barrier on the other side get, 
like on the other side of the path, like still surrounding the dome, maybe guests would have still came in and not ra ran away from the pandas, like treating them as, as an escaped animal. Might have still worked, and in which case I didn't need the the big old guest gate, but well, I don't know for now, but yeah, so you see I put those little glass pieces and it works quite well. The pandas can't get over that. Guests come in here and see the pandas all nicely, the game the game, yeah, the game treats it like a an actual walkthrough, well not an actual walkthrough, but it's a walkthrough exhibit that works and I'm really happy with how that turns out. It's nice to see that guests can come in and the pandas aren't really stressed by the guests. Most of the climbing structures I do build for them later end up being I don't know, at the back of the exhibit anyway, so they don't really come close to the guests. And like I said, they have a night room that the pandas do actually use to sleep in. It's quite cool. You see me working on that now. And yeah, I do. Now it's just the, the bare shell, and I'll put the climbing structures in for that. I do cut out a bit of the climbing structures because it gets really repetitive to do. But anyway, yeah, I don't. I can't think of anything else to talk about for. The red panda so I'm just gonna give you some red panda facts and namely why they're called red pandas I don't know if you ever wondered but why red pandas and giant pandas are grouped together it's a bit weird but initially red pandas were red and giant pandas were both part of the group of Ursidae that's the group belonging to bears and I'm not sure why red pandas were included with giant pandas because they look very different in my eyes. I wouldn't have grouped them the same. Maybe the guy that saw them thought, yeah, you know, there's these small bears and they both eat bamboo and they occupy similar niches. They're probably the same subfamily or what. So. But af afterwards, uh, red pandas were grouped in with the same family as raccoons and coatis. So, yeah, I forgot the family name for that, but. That, that makes more sense in my eyes, because morphologically a red panda does resemble a raccoon more than it does a bear. But technically that was still wrong, because later when they're looking at phylog phylogical, no, phylogenetic evidence, which is essentially the evolutionary pathway taken by red pandas, it sees that they're not exactly the same as coatis and raccoons, simply because they occupy a different ecological niche and all the Quartis and raccoons, they're all New World, found in North and South America, whereas red pandas are Asian, so different habitat, different, uh, what's it, location, so distribution is different. And so red pandas were put into their own family, and that's kind of where they sit now, in their own family, I think it's called the Luridae. I'm not sure, you're going to have to double check on that one. So yeah, that's, that's kind of the taxonomic history of red pandas, and... The current family now sits in the super family that includes, it does include the actual raccoons and coatis and it also includes the family of skunks and weasels. I'm not sure, I think, yeah, weasels and otters. And that, that makes more sense than putting them with bears, so they aren't actually closely related to giant pandas or panda bears. They just kind of share the same name as a old taxonomic, you know, uh, and historically they were part of the same thing, but not anymore. Now red pandas are their own thing, more closely related to weasels and skunks and raccoons and coatis. And that makes more sense. I don't know, I still don't know how people saw a little bear. It makes more sense that this is a, a, a raccoon type animal. It, it, although technically it's not. In that family that it's in, it's a basal form of the animal. So it clearly, it's split off from all the other the other animals in its taxon quite a while ago. So yeah, that's kind of I hope hope that was interesting learning about some taxonomy. I don't know, maybe you don't like taxonomy. I like taxonomy now and again. Yeah, that's kind of all I have to talk about now. I will cut out the, the what's it, the climbing structure stuff because it gets gets repetitive after a while. You know, just seeing a guy put down sticks. But yeah, I'll, yeah, I'm going to go into some real time so you can see this exhibit firsthand, and I'll talk to you through there. See you in a bit. Okay, here we are in the real time portion. 
we got some guests coming in to the zoo, so let's we get the actual atmosphere of how it would be in an open zoo. So I just put some bamboo to hide the, you know, the star stuff behind you. Anyway, let's go check out the actual red panda exhibit. So with this little door thing here, I used one of the glass wall pieces. I could have used maybe this one to put over here, but these little line beams here, you didn't have them in this one, so I decided to use this. And for me, I used, uh, I think, what's this called? This is like a... Yeah, this is a bracket and these are plugs actually, the exterior switch. And I use those to create a, a cool little door. I think that's quite well done. So the guests are unfortunately going to face through it, but it looks like an actual glass door. And I'm happy how that turned out. What is that? Oh, come on, keepers. Okay, some boxing has happened, unfortunately. I don't, it doesn't happen too often. I think like once or twice I've seen it. It's keeper. I don't want flies noises in my habitat. <laughs> oh yeah, here's the actual red panda exhibit. See guests do come through it, walk through, they look at the pandas. They do mainly chill at the back of the exhibit, climbing on those little beams there. And I did put two signs up. Put one on the wall here, which is okay. I'm not sure on the placement. It's kind of at an angle, so it's not that good. This one I kind of like because, you know, it's in the direction the guests would read it in. So yeah, I do have a little feeding platform. Unfortunately, the zookeeper hasn't full it up yet. Let's just see if I can get a zookeeper in here. Come on. It'll have to be a, a path or something. There we go. Okay, please come in. Fix why am I stuck? So I fix the the thing is. I don't know what those keepers do, man. I don't know the mechanics of this game. I just play because it looks cool. So yeah, and then obviously guests can exit through this side. And I just put some trees in the back to make it look a bit more I don't know, complete. This will be on the workshop, don't know if I mentioned that, but yeah, you can put it in your zoo. Obviously left everything blank here because I don't know. You put in your zoo, then you fill up stuff with what you have. So, yeah, staff stuff, but this is the actual staff entrance. A little door through here. And we have a key part in here, so you can see we're preparing some food. And that's all. Cool, we can see them feed them. And this area was a little empty, so I put some makeshift cupboards out of art shapes and doors. They look kind of like bridges or what. And here we have the actual backstage area, we have a little box that they can play with. I made sure not to put any food enrichment in here because I don't know if the keepers can come through. But because I, you can only have one staff have gate unfortunately, otherwise I would have a staff gate going through here. And a staff gate going through there. Just doing some cleanup, nice. So now I can see the climbing frame from up close. They haven't really used the screen, I haven't seen them use the tree. Yeah, and like I said, boxing does happen from now and again. I'm not too sure why it happens. Maybe if you pay close attention, you can see. And this is a little entrance to the night room, which they can use. They do go in here. You can fit through there. And have this little door to kind of emulate that, you know, can open and close. Where's the second one? There's two in here. I don't know where the second one went. Did they get injured? Oh, there he is. Hello, cutie. Uh, just... One thing with the night room and the outside is that they can actually jump from this platform onto this platform. They occasionally jump through the walls. So it's clear when they're climbing stuff they don't care about walls and ceilings. Which is why I use plaster for this little bit here. I would have used the wood uh, structure and just recolored it. But when I did my bear enclosure, I, as soon as I like put wood stuff, the bears came into the night room, climbed up the wood and onto the ceiling, so you can't use wood because wood is climbable. I have to use the plaster. But it's a little bit thicker than I wanted. But oh well. And I guess with the climbing thing, 
since they actually bypass walls, you might be able to put some, uh, like a gate like this, but up high in the wall, and you can actually make it smaller because the hitboxes wouldn't count in while they're climbing. So in the future, I'll probably do that. Maybe if I do some primates or something. Yeah, that's the, the exhibit, the enclosure, the habitat, whatever you call it. It's a red panda dome. Came out quite nice, I think. Yeah, that's all I got to show for today. Hopefully, I'll see you in future Planet Zoo videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.